Well, good morning, everyone. I am standing here uh, in Dakar, Senegal, early Sunday morning. This is probably, it's one of the farthest Western points of Africa. And uh, I and just, uh, we've been here for almost a week now. And we've been traveling around uh, the northern parts of Senegal uh, with a team that is look that are looking for places to uh, buy property, build churches, build tabernacles, build children's tabernacles, uh, dig wells, and uh, and raise up pastors in this place so that the gospel can go forth. Yesterday, we had the privilege of going into one of the world's uh, greatest lighthouses, which is here, and they allowed us to climb up in it. And, and see this whole beautiful uh, country of Senegal. And it, it is just a, an amazing sight. And it was a reminder to me that in this, in a dark place, there is a lighthouse. And that lighthouse, of course, is, is uh, Jesus Christ. That lighthouse is the church and Jesus is the light. And we go out and shine into darkness. And I will tell you, there's some dark places here this place is uh, only 3% of the population are believers in Jesus Christ. So I know that, the, uh, that this is a, a dark place spiritually, but also we were in a place called Gore Island. Gore Island is an island that was uh, captured by the Dutch uh, over 300 years ago. And then it was captured by the French and the English and the French. And, over and over again and finally by the French but it was a place where it, where it was, there was a place called the door of no return because on this island is where the slaves that were captured in on the continent of Africa uh, from the internal regions of Africa were brought to this place and this place where they held the slaves until the slaves were were purchased and then put on ships. It was the last place. The door of no return is there. And we just, as we took a tour of one of the slave houses there, you could see and feel the depravity of man, the depravity of mankind. Without the love of Jesus Christ, we are just so, so depraved. And uh, it was so, it was sad to be there. Um, but it was very enlightening and it's important. And I would, oh boy, I would wish for everyone to at least go and to experience uh, the Gory Island because it would just remind you of uh, uh, just the sadness of, our, of some of our history, some of Africa's history, really. And so, uh, but in that place also, I was reminded of the darkness of, of man's soul, but also the light of Jesus Christ because it pierces into the darkness. And that's what we're called to do. We're to pierce into the darkness. We're to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ so that souls will be saved. At the church today in the theater, they're having a prayer meeting. They'll be praying for many things, and one of those things they'll be praying for, for of course, is Senegal. This is a, a, a nation that uh, is hard soil. It's rocky soil. We have global workers that are here that I, I'm just so impressed by because it doesn't matter how hard the soil is. It doesn't matter how hard, how rough of a time they have. They're following the call of Jesus Christ. And, um, and so I've called the church to pray, to pray for Senegal. Our network uh, that we are a part of has gotten together and decided to adopt the nation of Senegal. This place is 97% Muslim, so there's only 3% uh, Christians. And so there's a lot of work to do. The harvest is ripe and we get to be part of the harvest. And so we're traveling around, we're looking at places where we can buy land. They're, they have this thing called emerging communities and, uh, and it's where communities will be built. And so, um, so we're looking to buy, we can get land at, at a reasonable price. And so we're gonna buy land, we're gonna put up a church. And so that when the village is built, when the community is built, there will be a presence uh, of, the, of the church there, presence of Jesus Christ. So we're looking to buy land. We're looking at, uh, to provide water solutions. Uh, what is necessary in a village is, is water. And so we will either dig wells or provide water solutions, tap into, provide the resources to tap into the water uh, that is available. 
we're also um, we're writing new curriculum or translating curriculum into French so that the Bible school would have that, so we're part of that as well. And then we look to uh, provide children's tabernacles, um, along with, of course, some building the church, and then helping the pastor uh, move into the community. The National Church of Senegal is partnering with us. So this is a, a great strategic partnership. And uh, the doors open in this opportunity. So we want to take advantage of this opportunity to go into Senegal right now. And so I want to thank you for partnering with us financially to do that. Uh, we've raised some significant funds, and we look to raise even more for the future. I was at a Bible college, the Bible college here, and I was just, um, my heart was stirred because of the lack of resources. Uh, so translating that curriculum is so important in this moment. But also, there's some significant work to be done on the in the facilities at that uh, Bible school. And I know what we did in Argentina, and I think that we can be partners in doing it again. And so I look forward to that. So pray with us, pray with me, pray for our workers, uh, our strategic global worker here, uh, the Rick and Elaine Caswell. And they were youth pastors at Center Point for nine years. Uh, it was called Fairfax Assembly of God back then. And they were called to the, na to the continent of Africa. They've been in Mali, they've been on the Ivory Coast, and now they're in Senegal. They live, they live right in the middle of Dakar, uh, right down, downtown. Uh, most of their friends are Muslim friends that they're leading to Christ. They have an English learning center, and uh, they send their greetings. Uh, but they're doing incredible work, and I just really love those guys. They're just terrific people. They're the real, <laughs> they're the real deal. Um, so pray with me uh, for those things. We pray, we're thankful for uh, Pastor Brandon and Roger and John who are going to go in May and they're going to help build the first church in this initiative and I was on that property and I was so excited to see what God is going to do uh, there. Uh, we, we've met some pastors, we stop and we pray for them on the land that we're purchasing and that they share with us their vision and their hope and their heart and it's, it's amazing. Some of those places, almost all those places, have a mosque that is so close by. There's this spiritual darkness here, and we need to invade the darkness. I, I tell you, the harvest is ripe here, and we get to be in on, the, on harvesting. And so I'm, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for you. So thankful for your partnership and your prayers. Let's continue to pray. Uh, let, let me just lead you in a prayer for Senegal, and, uh, and then I know you'll continue praying uh, throughout the morning. Father, Today we come before you, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to partner with you in the work of expanding the gospel here in Senegal. We pray that you would use us, Lord, but we also pray that you would raise up new workers. I know uh, Rick and Elaine Caswell are just praying for workers to come, and no matter what the skill, they just desire for workers to come. And I pray that the Lord of the harvest would send forth workers to this place, Lord Jesus. Raise up some people from Centerpoint Church, I pray that there would be a call that would go out and we would respond with obedience. Pray for the pastors here. Pray that you would strengthen them, that you would give them wisdom and discernment and courage, Lord, as they go into new villages where the gospel has never been preached. So many people have never heard a gospel witness. And I pray that you would bless them and help them, help bless their families. Pray for the resources. I pray that we would sacrificially give so that the church can expand here in Senegal. I pray, oh God, for the Bible students, Lord, that you would give them strength, that you would call them, Lord, and they will, as they go out to be church planners, that you would go before them and they would recognize that their, their source of strength is you. Father, we love you today. There's so much uh, more we could say and pray. But I pray that you would guide us by your spirit, empower your church, Bless Centerpoint Church. Bless them this morning as they pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.